Doesn't matter which side of the pole. <laughs> mastermind <laughs> who am i looking at are you sound matched up action in the last decade only four people can say they've had the honor of refereeing a world cup final amy parrot the australian takes charge the second welshman to receive this honor what a moment to referee her first world cup final jerome garces in his final test match at this year's World Cup in New Zealand, the next name will be added to this exclusive list. Crouch, bind, set. Have we got an angle that we'd like to see something? Did I just put a nail in the coffin for Colombia? Before a referee has a shot at the final, they must first gain selection for the World Cup match official squad. This is uncharted territory for World Cup rookie Kat Roche. My name is Kat Roche. I'm a referee in USA Rugby. I became a referee because I thought knowing the laws would make me a better player, and I fell in love with it. Who decides the match official squad that goes to the World Cup? There are three selectors, and then Alhambra is the World Rugby, the women's referee manager. Like, she is the head honcho. So I think off the bat, like she can be, for, for me at least, very intimidating. I'm Alhambra Nievas, and I'm part of the selection committee who decide who is going to the Rugby World Cup in New Zealand. So I'm going to talk through some of the key names for our uh, squad as Holly Davidson. Holly is one of um, the most experienced referees in the group. She's leading the way also refereeing some men's competition. So Sarah Cox has refereed three finals for World Rugby. She refereed a seventh Rugby World Cup, also the Commonwealth final and the Tokyo Olympic final. So she's one of our top referees. Uh, Amber from Australia. Super fit, um, she refereed the key final game in the qualification tournament in, in Dubai. The Six Nations window is, is key for uh, Amber to, to try to make the, the Rugby World Cup a squad. Kat Roche from USA, uh, taking the opportunities, um, leading the way in USA, uh, refereeing in some MLR games. She refereed in the final qualification tournament in Dubai, the game between Kazakhstan and, and Colombia, very tight and tough one. And it's her first Six Nations. We have near 30 names in the table, and we need to cut until 18 spots that we have for the Rugby World Cup. The selection committee is going to select 18 match officials in total. Um, nine referees, five assistant referees, and four TMOs. So um, the committee need to make tough calls. Sometimes it's, it's not easy because you want that everyone make the squad, but it's, it's high performance and it is what it is. The final is based on performance, and any of the new referees making her first Rugby World Cup will have this opportunity. And everyone is competing with herself to be the best version in the Rugby World Cup and why not to be considered for the, to referee the Rugby World Cup final. The final stages of the selection calendar is between February and May of 2022. From there, the final squad will be decided and only the top officials will travel to the World Cup. So let's talk about some of your games this year. That's Have not. <laughs> the final qualifying tournament in Dubai will decide which country secures the last spot at the Rugby World Cup. American Kat Roche will referee the semi-final between Colombia and Kazakhstan and use it as an addition for a place in the World Cup match official squad. The path to the World Cup, I mean, the World Cup is kind of, it's like the end game. It's something that's on every referee's bucket list and it's what we're all working towards. The most challenging thing about selection to the World Cup is that it's out of your control. The only thing I can do is put out my best self. Then it's just up to the up to the selectors. Then. Okay, so top priority: touch, foul play, kicks a goal. Everything else that you guys can give me is fantastic. 
Hi, I'm Ian Tempest. I'm one of the professional RFU referees, um, and I was the TMO for Cats game, Colombia versus Kazakhstan. It's my second time ever using a TMO. It was my first time using an experienced TMO, and it was a lot to take in. We'd spoken about how we would deal with grounding situations, and we also touched on some of the foul play situations that may or may not happen. So, if we've got a kick on the left side of the field, right? Whoever's right there is gonna chase it. Whoever's on the far side, just watch for late hits on the kicker. And I think the preparation going into yesterday's game um, certainly helped us in the situation of the foul play incident that we had. If someone's noticing the referee, like you've got a problem on your hands. But if you can go out there and just talk about the rugby, you come off the field and everyone's like, wow, that was a great game of rugby. Perfect. They don't see me, they don't see my white boots, they see nothing. Well, I've given a red card out in many games. Um, this was the one where I gave a red card at 14 minutes. A lot of people may not know in the, in the van we've got different angles. Wait, hit on the kicker. And I've got all the camera angles available to myself in different speeds, real speed, slow speed, freeze frame. Um, so when a referee gives a decision, we're almost double checking the sanctions right and the facts are right. I didn't agree with Kat's facts in terms of we were at the right sanction. I'm not seeing that initial contact hitting anything but the body first. The situation came, we put it up on the screen, and I knew all the words Tempo was saying. He's like... Number eight makes direct contact with the head. Looked at it on the EVS and the side monitor that we have, and um, decided that it was worthy of a higher sanction than what Kat would give. So uh, sort of initiated a formal review with her, um, and then we went through our process that we'd agreed in the week leading into the game. Okay, so based on that, I'm thinking red card, direct contact with the head, reckless play, no attempt at charge down. Yeah? Yes, I agree. As I gave it, I was genuinely like, this is it now. I'm the ref that just gives red cards in test matches. Like, that's how I'll be remembered. Rojo Roche, red card Roche, that's it. It's my career, you know. 13 versus 26, I just red carded the 26th ranked team 14 minutes in, did I just put a nail in the coffin for Colombia? Just moments ahead of the kickoff for the second half. The captains have a job as much as we do, and their job is to get advantageous things for their team. Some words between some Colombian players and referee Cat Roach. Working the short side is Normato by the scrum half and she will burst clear and reach out. Long pass over the top, shifted on by Mejia. Mejia and now it's Azuaga. For Kat Roche, it's addition over for now. A baptism of fire in one of her first games working with a TMO for Kat and her other referee hopefuls, focus turns to the next challenge. Six Nations is really the big opportunity to show, and from that, they really pick the final team. Opening weekend of the Women's Six Nations, I refereed Ireland Wales. It's her first Six Nations, so how she performed in, in, in these two games in the Six Nations in the first two rounds, it will be uh, massive for her. Kat Roach, third American to take charge of a Women's Six Nations game. She made history last year in becoming the first woman to referee a major league rugby fixture in the States. I always blow the first whistle and I'm like, I forget how to referee rugby. Yeah, they'll have real fire in their bellies and have a, pr a point to prove in this match today and, and going forward through this whole Six Nations. And then they get the ball and the first tackle, I'm always like, oh, okay, I know what this is. Grant Pratt. And here's this Welsh ball. Ireland have a little bit pre warned about this. They're almost over the line. That's the opening try of the day for Wales. I had the time of my life. It was a close game. It was very exciting. There were a lot of really good tries that were scored. 
And it was a great experience, like despite looking at the film and seeing all these things I would have done differently. She really wants to keep the, the game alive and she has um, some key moments with one of TMO Paul when she needs to interact with uh, Nikki and with, uh, and with Clara. <laughs> And they're going right through the middle of that Irish defence. They're over the line. The referee time, looking for a time, good viewpoint. Pat Roach unwilling to quite make a call just yet. We are going to check a possible obstruction by Red. On-field decision is pulled up. Goal line dropout. Let's do anything different. What's crucial here is Ireland didn't go up and contest. They stayed on the ground to try and battle right. Wales back. Kat, I've got a decision for you. Okay. The lifters clearly obstruct Ireland getting onto the ball carrier. So uh, stay with your on-field decision, no try, but it will be a penalty against Wales for obstruction. Okay, penalty against Wales for obstruction. Yes, okay. at the line out, at 15, 15 metres in. 15 and 5, thank you. Um, this kind of decision are um, when we are looking at and where are the process. If the, um, for example, in this TMO call with Claire and Nikki involved, they make the right decision, the right outcome. So these are the key moments the, um, that we are looking at when we, when we review games and also having the big picture of, of the performance. Ireland force into touch. And there is the full time whistle. A successful Six Nations debut for Kat proves she can perform at the highest level. But she'll have her work cut out for her next week when Italy host England and the hundreds of thousands watching from home on TV. At that time, it was a lot of living out of a suitcase, a lot of insides of hotel rooms, a lot of planes, a lot of masks, and a lot of COVID tests. Wake up. Get, see a text on my phone from Kat to the group, something triggers and says you need to go. 